All right, let's take a look at some examples of determining the symmetry of various functions. So I'm looking at the homework in section 1.4 on page 107 and number 28 where we're given that g of x is defined to be 2x cubed plus 4x. So our first step is to look at g of minus x. And g of minus x is just taking every x that occurs on the right hand side here and replacing it with minus x. So 2 times minus x and putting parentheses around will be helpful plus 4 times minus x. Now, minus x cubed, that's going to be minus x times minus x times minus x. That's going to be three negatives. Three negatives multiplied together produce a negative. And three x's multiplied together leave me x cubed. And four times minus x is a minus four x. So we simplify, and we take a look. Is this equal to g of x? Well, no, it's not. Because here we have uh, you know, a plus 2x cubed, and the first term here is a minus 2x cubed. So those are different, therefore, it's not the same thing as the original. Is this the same thing as minus g of x? Well, minus g of x would be minus 2x cubed. And distributing the minus to both terms, we have minus 4x. Yeah, that's exactly what we got in step two. So this is even seeing if it's equal to minus g of x is odd. So this tells us that g of x is odd and not even. Let's take a look at 30 on the same page, where again we have g of x being defined as x over x squared plus 1. So we start off by looking at g of minus x. and replacing every occurrence on the right here, replacing every occurrence of x with minus x, leaves us with the following. So we simplify, let's see, minus x is just minus x, minus x squared, that's minus x times minus x, two negatives multiplied together leave me with a positive, two x's multiplied together leave us with x squared. So what we have is negative x over x squared plus one. All right, now we see is this equal to the original? Well. No, the denominators are the same because we can really ignore this plus. This plus x squared is just x squared. So the denominators are the same, but the numerators are different. This numerator has an neg extra negative sign in it. So it's not equal to g of x, so it's not even. Is it equal to minus g of x? Well, minus g of x would be minus this fraction. And it turns out that this is the same thing. 
because if you think of this as minus one times the fraction, then minus one can be written as minus one over one, and then multiplying fractions is just multiplying straight across. Minus one times x is minus x, one times x squared plus one is just x squared plus one. And that is exactly the same thing as we have from step two. So this tells us that g of x is even, or excuse me, I'm sorry, it's odd because it's equal to the negative, g of minus x was equal to the negative of g of x and not even. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at one more example. <clears throat> let's look at something like 34 on the same page. And on 34, we have another fraction we have x squared plus 7, and all of that is going to be divided by 3x to the fourth plus 16x squared plus 9. So our first step is to look at g of minus x. So this is going to be parentheses, minus x, close parentheses, squared, plus 7. Then 3 times parentheses, minus x, close parentheses, to the fourth, plus 16 times minus x, squared, plus 9. Now we have to simplify. Well, as we've seen before, minus x squared is just x squared. So that's going to be true for the minus x squared up top and the minus x squared on bottom. And minus x to the fourth, multiplying four negatives together gives us a positive and multiplying four x's together is simply x to the fourth. And that's about as simple as we can get, get it. So we ask, is this the same thing as the original? And sure enough, it is. So that tells us that g of x is even. Is this the same thing as minus g of x? Well, no, it's not, because minus g of x would be minus x squared plus 7 over, oops, put the minus out here, 3x to the fourth plus 16x squared plus 9. And while everything else is the same, you know, minus g of x has an extra negative in front of it. So there's no way we can deal with, there's no way we can get rid of this negative without changing the rest of this. So g of x is not odd. So g of x is only even. And it turns out that the only function that has, that is both even and odd, and coincidentally has x-axis symmetry, is the function, the constant function, zero. Because f of minus x doesn't matter what x is. There's no x's on the right to replace. So everything on the right stays the same. And this is the same thing as the original, it's also the same thing as minus zero, which is minus the original. So 
this is the only function that is both even and odd. 